Reformed Church. You know, the Bible talks about how Abraham did not consider his own body or the deadness of Sarah's womb in Romans 4. And when he says that he didn't consider his own body, I've thought about that a little bit because obviously it's, does, that doesn't mean that Abraham didn't know the condition of his body or that he wasn't aware of it or wasn't aware that Sarah couldn't have children. And there may be more to it than this, but um, when I was sort of meditating on it, I know that this is at least part of it. Um, like I said, there could be more to it, but, but this is absolutely part of what that means when it's that he didn't consider it. Because specifically, the context of the chapter is about Abraham having been given a promise that he'd be heir of the world. Now, obviously, we know at this church what that means. That means um, that he was given the things of the new earth. He was given access to those things now, which is why it says that Abraham believed that what God had promised regarding the new earth, he was also able to perform in him is the context of the chapter. So uh, there's a lot of explanation there, but suffice to say right now, um, what Abraham was believing was basically the answer to all of his problems that Jesus had provided in all the things of the kingdom of God and all the things of the new earth. That's what being heir of the world meant, that he, that he would inherit the, 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 uh, the next earth, and God was able to perform that in him now, um, the things of the resurrection. And so that's the context of, of, the, of the chapter, but... Um, but Abraham believed that promise, but it, so that's, that's, that's what the chapter itself is talking about. So when it gets down to saying that Abraham did not consider um, his own body or the dead, deadness of Sarah's womb, and some translations have some variations that we can maybe talk about after service if you have questions about that verse. But, um, but in the King James Version, it's that he did not consider his own body. Um, at the very least, part of what that means is that Abraham did not factor in, right? He did not take into account the deadness of, of his own body, the age of his own body, or the deadness of Sarah's womb that was both sort of inoperative because of age and because of her being barren even in her younger days. But he did not take those things into consideration when considering the promise of God. You see, a lot of times when God says something to you, you, you look at things in the physical to see how likely the promise is in coming to pass for you or your progress in that promise, or whatever it is. And that's what Abraham didn't do. So when it says he didn't consider his own body or, or Sarah's, um, the context of that is in context of the promise that he was given. So that's why I say I know that this is at least part of it. God spoke something to Abraham, and Abraham didn't say, okay, Lord, and then look at his body and factor that in. And how likely is that to happen? How likely is that to happen? Um, how soon is it going to happen? Where's my progress in that promise? He just let the word of God be the word of God and did not factor in the physical things that he saw into, to sort of like, I guess this is probably the best way to say it. He didn't allow the, thing, the physical things he saw to put context into the promise of God, but he allowed the promise of God to put his circumstance into context, right? He saw things through the promise of God, not seeing the promise of God through his circumstance, right? He, didn't, he wasn't looking to, to, to validate what God said or to assure himself of what God said based on what he saw. He didn't, and that's why when he says that he didn't consider, um, part of that is at least that he wasn't factoring that in to the promise of God. And so we have a lot of things that God has spoken to us as a church and as individuals, and you know, those things are valid because of the fact that God spoke these things, and they have blood backing by Jesus, right? So it's not just because God spoke it and God can't lie, but it's because it has the backing of a payment of an intercessor. That's what gives us the assurance that the thing that God spoke to us, that God has the right to say what he said, um, that we have the right to receive what he said, is because we have the backing of the blood of Jesus and his broken flesh for us. That sacrifice, that's why Jesus called the surety of the better covenant. It's not just that God spoke it, even though he can't lie. We have the backing. And when God speaks something to you, you take it on its face for what it is and say, Lord, I believe what you're saying because it's true and you cannot lie and I have the backing of the sacrifice of Jesus to support that, to know that it is just for me to receive this because of what you said. And um, this is why Sarah laughed when she ultimately received life to her body. Not because it, was, it wasn't a laugh of unbelief. I could teach more on this, but it wasn't a laugh of unbelief, but it was a laugh because it is sort of a funny thing to see the contrast between what everybody might have expected for Sarah's life 
her being old and barren from her younger days. And uh, Isaac actually means laughter. Her manifestation of Isaac, um, she named him laughter, um, according to the word of, word of God. And, and, um, and so she laughed, though, because of that contrast. Like, man, contrary, actually it says this in Romans 4, contrary to expectation, Abraham expected to see these things in his life. In other words, contrary to human expectation for him or for Sarah, they still expected the miracle of the things of new earth to be performed in their bodies. And so this is why you don't take into account physical circumstances when God gives you a word of what his son has provided for you and what you can see in your life. You, just, you, don't, you don't put the promise of God and try to give it context or validate it or invalidate it in any such way or change it because, oh, it doesn't look likely, though, because I'm X amount of years old. It doesn't look likely because, you know, this, you know, because, um, you know, whatever, Sarah, you know, got worse. It, you know, um, she was barren from the beginning, and then she got too old to have kids, even if she wasn't barren. So it's like, you, you, you don't give context to the promise of God, right? God doesn't need your circumstance to validate his word. So you, you let the word of God be the word of God, and... It's not, and a lot of people might say, well, my circumstance is just a lie. No, that's not true. That is not true. Your circumstance isn't a lie. Your circumstance just simply doesn't validate or invalidate the word of God. Um, it's not that we're not carnally minded because you don't want to consider your circumstance because it's not really happening or something like that. No. It's that there is context to that circumstance that you need to be able to see. You need to look at your circumstance through the eyes of what Jesus did for you and through the eyes of what God has spoken to you and therefore understand all things and judge all things correctly, right? We who are spiritual judge all things. Um, when you're spiritually minded, it actually gives you good judgment even on physical circumstances. But again, it's not the other way around, right? And I'll stop with that. It's just not the other way around. You see the word of God, you see what Jesus did, and you let that determine what you believe about your circumstance. You don't get a promise from God, look at your circumstance, and then tell God or tell yourself how likely or unlikely that is, or how soon or how far away that particular thing is based on how it looks, right? Like, you want, like we put words in God's mouth because of stuff we see or things that we hear or things that we sense instead of put context to your circumstance based off what God said. I'm going to see this through the lens of what God has spoken to me instead of the other way around, seeing the promise of God through the lens of, of your circumstance. So, very important thing. You don't consult your circumstance when God speaks to you. You just simply don't. You just simply don't. When you know you have something in Christ, when he speaks to you about what you can manifest in your life, you don't look to the right or to the left to consult somebody else because we know that's robbery, right? You look at Jesus, you look at him and him crucified, and you don't turn your skull, your Golgotha, to the right or to the left because there's just a thief and a robber on either side of the cross, right? You don't look elsewhere because you're going to be robbed and spoiled of the benefits you could be receiving. And you know what Abraham did instead? Instead of turning to the right or to the left, considering his body or Sarah's body, and then trying to sort of determine what he could or could not receive based on those circumstances, instead, you know what the Bible says he did in Romans 4? It says he gave glory to God. That means he gave thanks to God. He took the word of God, but instead of just hearing it, he constantly gave God thanks for that word. Because we know, right, by the purpose of prayer series I've taught before, thanksgiving, it establishes that word in your heart. And it says he grew strong in faith. He was strengthened in faith as he gave thanks to God. So rather than consider all this stuff over here, he took the promise of God and said, I'm going to consider the promise of God. Kept giving thanks to God for his promises. Kept thanking God over and over again for what Jesus was to do for him. God, because he lived before Jesus. Gave thanks to God for all this stuff. And then instead of looking to the right or to the left and getting discouraged, he actually fixed his eyes, kept thanking God for the, for the things he believed to be true. And that actually took a man who, by what people estimate, I believe is like about 25 years before he saw Isaac, um, and he actually took that time to be strengthened in faith, and he saw the manifestation that God wanted him to see in his life. But um, anyway, a lot of good stuff. Clearly, I would recommend you read Romans 4 and, and, and see the good example of um, how Abraham received. And you know what? You, you're not subject to how Abraham received. You can receive differently. But God has awesome things for you in your life, and uh, if you don't take your eyes off of Jesus, you know, you, you'll, you'll see that. But just don't, don't, don't be considering everything else.
to try to put context to the word of God or, or to, uh, to validate it in some kind of way, right? His promise is good enough by itself. We hope you enjoyed this message from Reform Church. If you have, please share this with someone else and help us get this uncommon truth out to the world. If you'd like to support this good news, you can do so at reformchurch.com slash give. Also on our website, you can take advantage of our free messages, articles, and even full discipleship courses. Start reforming your mind now at reformchurch.com.